guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I have another challenge. You guys know how much I love challenges and how much they stress me out. So I'm going to challenge myself to pick out 10 brushes if I could only keep 10 brushes. Very, very stressful for me. The original, if I could only keep 10 bag, I believe started from Annette's Makeup Corner. She did if I could only keep 10 eyeshadow palettes. I did that video. You guys loved it. Somebody suggested that I do brushes and I thought to myself, huh, that would be very, very helpful for others, I feel, because I have an abnormally large brush collection and the average person does not need as many brushes as I have. So I thought it would be very interesting and informative to pick out 10 brushes that I would keep if I could only keep 10. I also saw that Mel actually did this version as well. So I'm going to link hers down below. I'm not stopping. These, if I could only keep 10, are real fun. Expect to see more. Comment down below what other categories of if I could only keep 10 you would like to see and let's just get into it. Something important to know about these types of videos is that it's not necessarily what are my top 10 brushes. It's about variety and especially with brushes, it's about versatility. So that was my main challenge. Like It hurts me that Sonia G, Wayne Goss, Blinged Brushes, a lot of brush brands that I am devoted to are not featured in this video because I also had to think of, all right, I can only keep 10. These brushes need to be versatile as well. They need to be multifunctional. That is something to keep in mind. But anyways, let's get to it. So we're going to start off with face brushes. So when it comes to face brushes, I feel like those can be used for multiple things. I do have my preferences for certain steps in my routine, but for the most part, there's a lot of different shapes that can be used for different things. So for my all over powder brush or bronzer brush, I picked out the Esam X51. This is a big fat circle brush and I love it. It's not too dense, but it's also not too soft either. It has the perfect in between so that you can set your whole face. It's big enough for that. But if you want as well, this works great for bronzer. I love Esam brushes. They last forever. This is the perfect shape for any type of powder that needs to be applied on a large surface area. What was really tough was I couldn't pick out my favorite bronzer specific brush because this I don't typically use for bronzer. I will use it for bronzer, but I also use it for all over setting powder. So it was between this brush and my bronzer brush and I was like, well, I can do more with this. So I have to go with my Esam X51. The next brush that I have is also also from Esam and this is the X 52. Does it look familiar? It's literally the baby version of the X51. I just love the shape of these brushes because this is one of my favorite blush brushes. That's typically what I use for this. But also if you want a little bit more of a direct application, you can do some contour with this as well. So I found this to be versatile for contour and for blush and it just fits in the cheek area perfectly. And again, I just love the hairs that these are made of because they're great for picking up powder products. I needed a highlighting brush. I picked out my all-time favorite highlighting brush. This is from Morphe. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what brush number this is. Is this Y4, Y5? Hopefully it's on the screen right now because the wording came off, but I love this brush. It's really affordable as well, and for me, it's the perfect highlighter brush. It's the perfect length. It's the perfect density. It's dense enough to pick up product if you really need to dig in there, but it also gives you a soft application as well because of how flimsy it is, and it feels really well made for the price that you pay for it, so I really love this highlighting brush. I don't use it in my videos because this actually ended up traveling to my makeup kit because I use it on others, but I do need to purchase a couple others of these because this is probably my favorite highlighting brush. I was going to pick my blinged brush one, but that one is too dense. I needed something that was less dense because the bling brush highlighting brush doesn't work for every highlight. This one does. Really great affordable brush. The perfect shape, size, length, all of that stuff for highlight. And the last face brush that I have, and I use it for eyes as well. So again, that versatility that I'm talking about. This is the Esam W25. Now that I'm taking a look, I have a lot of Esam brushes in here. That just goes to show you how good this line is. But the W25, it is this just flat brush really let me show you a big flat brush and I love this for cream products I either use this for my concealer to blend it out if I was too lazy to wet my beauty blender I'll run this over my concealer to spread it out or typically what I use it for is spreading out my eye base so I normally use Mac painterly paint pot this is just what I use to throw it all over my eyelid but this brush can be used in other ways as well I think it would be really great for a cream contour down the nose or that contour around the lips anything cream I love this for but you can also 
also use this for a large shadow application as well, especially if you have a larger eyelid than I do. But I totally could have wet the brush and used the lid color I used today to just press that on as well. So this can be used for eyeshadow. And what I like to use it for is cream product. So for me, these were the only four face brushes that I needed because I can use this for powder and bronzer. I can use this for bronzer and blush. And then I just have my highlight and that's basically all I need. And if I do need to spread out some creams, I have this as well. Eyes were a little bit harder. It's a smaller area on your face. I also have small eyes, so I had to decide between big fat brushes, detail brushes, all of that stuff. I couldn't live without my ABH number 14 brush. This is my eyebrow brush, and I feel like if I could only keep 10 brushes, I need this to run through my eyebrows with powder. On an everyday basis, I do prefer a powder eyebrow product. I've used this brush for years on my eyebrows, so much that I don't think I could ever use anything else. It's a really dense brush with just a little bit of give. I like that it's dense enough so that I can blend up the powder when you get into the inner part of the eyebrow. And also, I figured it could be a good shadow liner brush as well if I I ever need to actually line my eye with shadow I have this as well I really thought this through as if it was actually happening <laughs> I also had to pick out a eyeliner brush that I love typically when I use a liner it is gel liner that's my favorite form of liner so I had to have my favorite liner brush and this is the MAC 210 I've been using this since I was in middle school and it's the tiniest little eyeliner brush ever in the world and I love it I feel like it really allows me me to swoop out to get that wing. It's very precise for me and I typically don't like using angled brush for liner. It's just more comfortable for me to lay this brush flat and run it across my lash line and just for the fact that I've used this for like 10 years, this is my favorite eyeliner brush. I love it and it hurt me because I feel like I did waste the space for another brush because this is just eyeliner. It's not really that versatile but I need this brush to do my liner. I just do. So now let's get into my actual eyeshadow brushes. I like to start off with a trans transition color so for that I need a big fat nice fluffy blending brush and so I chose the Esam G34 and it's just as fat as it can get. I just love this for throwing on and blending on a color, blending out the harsh edges of my eye makeup look. I just needed one bigger blending brush to cover a lot more surface area and this is the one that I went to because I feel like it picks up powder very easily. It doesn't scratch my eye but it does still have enough scratchiness to pick up the powder because sometimes if brushes are too silky they don't pick up the powder that you need. This picks it up, blends it out, it's dense and Enough to really work the product out as well so this is kind of a staple blending brush for me but I also needed a smaller blending brush because I have little eyes I need a blending brush for that outer corner and for the lower lash line the refer 13 brush. It's thin enough and long enough to really put some work and detail into my eye So I'll use this for right out in this little corner here And then of course I can run any color along my lower lash line with this brush So if you have small eyes, I highly 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 recommend this blending brush It really lets you get some detail work in if you want just a little bit of more precision in the crease This is perfect for that and I could have five billion of these and be happy I love this one so much small eyes you need it but I needed a shader brush, just something that I could pack on some color when I'm feeling lazy not to use my finger. And so I chose the Refer number two brush. Now Refer was the first shader brush that I came across. Honestly, any shader brush really works for me. If I picked up my MAC one, I would have picked that one up for this video. If I picked up my Wayne Goss one, that would have been in this video, but this guy won. So I'm putting in the refer at number two, and it's just a simple shader brush, just what you kind of need for every shadow to pop on the eyelid for every day. And then time for my last brush, number 10. I feel like I'm really running through these. This is gonna be a nice short video. But the last brush that I need, and I need this brush. This brush specifically is amazing. This is the Refer number three brush and this is the tiniest, cutest little pencil brush ever. I'm sorry, I did not clean any of these brushes for this video. This is an especially small pointer little brush and you can do so much with this. So if you do a cut crease eye, you can use this to pack the color on close to the tip of that concealer that you put down. You can use it if you're doing a really detailed eye look to pack that color onto the eyelid. You can use it for your inner corner color or you could trace 
some shadow along your lower lash line as well again if you want to get very detailed for it I even use this for shadow liner sometimes if you take like a piece of cardboard or a card or something you can create a perfect line using shadow by just using this it's that small this is one of the most versatile eye brushes in my collection it's so tiny I think if you start off smaller it's actually a little bit better because you can always extend the surface area just by patting and moving out the pigment whereas if you start with too big of a brush you really can't get any precision you know I did need a big fluffy brush but I also got pretty precise with the rest of my brushes because precision is more important to me than just blowing everything out so those are the 10 brushes I would keep if I could only keep 10 with all of these brushes I can do a lot of different things with them and they give me the look that I personally desire on an everyday basis so I'm very happy with these brushes I will link them down below in the description box if you want to check them out because all of them are awesome brushes and they've gotten a ton of use from me and before you guys ask I did want to take a moment to talk about the eye look that I did. I didn't film a tutorial so for those of you wondering I do want to at least talk about what I used. If you were just here to see the brushes I picked out you're good to go you can exit out now make sure you subscribe though first but if you want to know what I did with my look I just did my recent collection video which was the affordable and drugstore eyeshadow palette collection and there were so many shadows that I have never used and it's very embarrassing and one of them that I talked about was the BH Cosmetics Summer in Saint Tropez. I said I've never used this but the colors are gorgeous and I'm feeling inspired by this palette so today since I wasn't filming a tutorial or anything or the products on my face didn't necessarily matter I pulled this guy out to play with it and you guys this palette for the price that it is is so good look how stunning my eye look is I'm obsessed with it so summer in Saint Tropez I did check it is still available if you're interested and it's really stunning you get a lot of colors so I started off with intoxicating and I put that all over my crease this was kind of my transition color I then went in with pampalone and I used that on the outer half of my crease I didn't do any crazy technique I did my normal technique this color y'all is so pigmented I was very very impressed by this blue and then I took bay which is a darker color and I used that to really deepen up the eye look I also used it as a quick shadow liner as well this shade is good but it does blend away a little bit more easy than I would prefer it's pigmented and it's blended which is important but I did find myself having to kind of rebuild it especially as shadow liner it wasn't very good for that you can really tell a truly good matte by if you're able to do shadow liner with it with ease and this one wasn't ease it was kind of just not as pigmented and deep as I would have liked as a shadow liner but it got the job done and honestly just to deepen up a look it's a fine color it doesn't get patchy and it blends out fine so that's what created the deepness and then kind of the star of the show here I took exotic and I put that on the inner half of my eyelid. I played her a little bit around with coastline. I don't know that I like it. I didn't seem to get too, too much color with it, but I'm just not sure I was pairing it with the right look or using it in the right way because I was using it on top of the blue and I didn't really like it. So I think that color might shine better on its own on the eyelid, but exotic bam, so pretty. But that is how I got this look. So, so far, I actually really, really like this palette. Can't believe it took me so long to use it. And I just wanted to share my my experience with this palette with you guys because it's so good like I need to create more looks with it this is like awesome I bought it months ago but dang BH you create some good shadows so that is all I have for today's video if you are curious about any other item that I'm wearing on my face you can go down and check in the description box and like I said if you aren't subscribed to my channel I hope you guys take the time to do so I am posting six days a week so I am here almost every day except Sunday and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one